I just want to make it clear that I've never had intentions of thinking in my twin sister's life. And if I could, uh, if I could take back what I did, I would in the heartbeat. On January 8, 1992, an extraordinary event took place in the city of Camden. New Jersey identical twin girls Amanda and Anna Ramirez were born into the world. The girls arrived just minutes apart, like two little angels entering this life hand in hand. From their very first days, the sisters shared a special bond that only grew stronger over the years. When I first heard about this case, I was struck by the fact that Amanda and Anna were so close from birth. In my years working as a detective, I've seen many different families, but such a powerful twinship is truly unique. Although I didn't personally investigate this case, I feel compelled to share it with you because it deserves your attention. I want you to draw your own conclusions from this truly shocking story. I hope you have your popcorn ready because you're in for quite a tale. The girl's parents, immigrants from Puerto Rico, had built a large, loving family in pursuit of a better life. Despite the hardships they faced on their journey to the American dream, they managed to keep their home warm and united. Amanda and Anna grew up surrounded by older siblings, with younger sisters arriving later. Yet the twins stood out from the rest with their uncanny resemblance and inseparable bond. From a very young age, the sisters were like two peas in a pod. They adored dressing alike, playing with identical toys, and spending every waking moment together. It seemed Amanda and Anna understood each other without words, sensing the other's moods and emotions. Even childhood squabbles were quickly forgotten as they became best friends again. I've seen photos of Amanda and Anna as children, and I must say, their likeness is simply astonishing. It must have been challenging even for their parents to tell them apart at times. That closeness between sisters is unique, but it also had the potential to cause issues down the road. Watching Amanda and Anna during those years, one could only marvel at the strength of their connection. They were like two shoots of the same tree, reaching for each other, drawing strength and inspiration. Their parents and family took immense pride in their special girls and rejoiced that in this big, often harsh world, they had each other. Little did anyone know then what trials lay ahead and how their unique bond would impact the course of events. But in those carefree childhood days, everything seemed so simple and bright, with so many uncharted paths still to explore. The birth of twins is always something special, but Amanda and Anna's story is truly one of a kind. Their loving, close-knit upbringing built a strong foundation for their future lives. However, as we know, life often throws unexpected curvy balls. And this case is a prime example of how even the strongest bonds can be tested by fate. How so, you ask? Well, I'll tell you but only to those wonderful people who are subscribed to my channel. If you're not subscribed yet, be sure to hit that button like this video and leave any comment to help more people find it. From the very first days, Amanda and Anna's parents noticed their daughter's incredible bond that seemed to have formed in the womb itself. They recounted how in those early months, the sisters would even sleep in the same crib as though unable to be apart. This special connection only intensified over the years, forging Amanda and Anna into a true team. They did everything together, practically joined at the hip, unwaveringly following each other's every move. Observing them, I couldn't help but ponder just how powerful a twin bond can become and how it shapes their lives. The girl's mother, Mrs. Ramirez, warmly recalled how she nurtured the friendship between her daughters, wanting Amanda and Anna to forever remain each other's pillars, and the sisters did not disappoint. They learned to walk together, started preschool and school together, shared their most intimate secrets. It seemed nothing in this world could break their mighty sisterly union that only tempered with time. As a detective, I often encounter cases where close bonds between people become a trial for themselves and those around them. So Amanda and Anna's story piqued my interest, not just professionally, but also in understanding human nature. The parents shared that the twins had their own secret language for communicating with each other. At times, it was as if they could read each other's minds, anticipating the other's actions and desires. It was something unfathomable like a telepathic link that existed only between the two of them. Even at school, teachers marveled at how Amanda and Anna could seamlessly complete each other's answers as one singular entity. This extraordinary sisterly bond inspired awe, but also raised concerns. Would it hinder their individual growth? Could the girls find their place in life alone without their counterparts' constant presence? These were the questions that nagged not just the parents, but me as well as I delved into the details of this incredible story. Yet in childhood, it all seemed so idyllic. Amanda and Anna were blissfully happy together, and it appeared it would always be that way. They shared their most private dreams, supported each other's pursuits, rejoiced in successes and consoled failures. The sisters were two halves of a whole, unable to envision life without the other. 
Amanda and Anna grew up in an atmosphere of love, support, and unity. The large Ramirez family did everything in their power to provide the girls with a joyful, carefree childhood. The sisters played together, got into mischief together, attended family celebrations side by side. They adored dressing up in matching dresses and fooling those around them by pretending to be each other. Their parents smiled recounting those moments when even they couldn't tell their own daughters apart. It was a true test for everyone, but also a source of laughter and delight in the Ramirez household. At school, the twin sisters stuck together too. They excelled equally in nearly every subject, often doing each other's homework assignments. Yet teachers didn't scold Amanda and Anna too harshly for such antics, as the sisters demonstrated excellent grades and behavior. According to their school friends, Amanda and Anna operated as a team, always ready to help one another out. Even during tests, the sisters managed to discreetly pass notes with answers. It was something incredible, as if they could read each other's minds. The twins grew into kind-hearted, good-natured and joyful young women. They easily connected with people and lit up any group. Amanda and Anna dreamed of becoming nurses to help the sick and ailing. And though their family lacked the funds for both daughters' education, their parents vowed to do whatever it took to make their girls' dreams come true. With tears in her eyes, Mrs. Ru Ramirez recounted how she and her husband worked tirelessly to give Amanda and Anna the chance to attend college. It was their shared dream, and they were willing to make any sacrifice for their children's happiness. Amanda and Anna's classmates and friends always remarked on their kindness, sincerity and willingness to lend a hand. The girls were the true jewels of school life, ever smiling, welcoming and open to connection. They enthusiastically participated in all kinds of events, from charity fairs to school plays. It seemed nothing could cast a shadow over their happy childhood and carefree adolescence. Yet life brings not just joys and triumphs, but obstacles too that must be overcome. For Amanda and Anna, the trial came in the form of their father's illness. Mr. Ramirez fell gravely sick, leaving the family in dire straits. But even in those dark times, the sisters never lost hope, supporting each other every step. They banded together even tighter, striving to help their mother and ease their father's suffering. This period became a true test of their spiritual fortitude and sisterly bonds resilience. But that carefree childhood passed quickly, and the sisters had to grow up. Anna was the first to marry her beloved Louis and give birth to three wonderful children. She became a doting mother who spared no effort for her little ones. At the same time, Anna completed nursing courses and began working as a licensed nurse. Patients and colleagues adored Anna for her kindness, warmth and willingness to help at a moment's notice. As her co-workers recounted, Anna was a true angel in the hospital, always smiling, compassionate and tireless. She had a knack for lifting every patient's spirits, finding the right words of solace and support. Anna worked hard to secure a bright future for her kids. Yet despite her busyness, she always made time for her large family, especially her beloved sister Amanda. Anna often visited her parents, sisters and brothers, chatting with Amanda nearly every day the girls would talk for hours on the phone, sharing experiences and supporting each other. Even distance and life's troubles couldn't weaken their special bond. It seemed to only grow stronger over the years, helping the sisters overcome any hardship. Unlike her sister, Amanda was in no rush to marry. She too completed nursing courses and began working at the same hospital as Anna. The girls were together again like in childhood, now saving lives side by side. Colleagues joked that with nurses like the Ramirez sisters, any patient would recover in no time, as they were a true guardian angel team. Like Anna, Amanda was always ready to lend a hand, uplift with a kind word and sincere smile. Patients adored her warmth and compassion, while colleagues respected her professionalism and dedication. In her free time, Amanda often visited her sister to play with her nieces and nephews and catch up with Anna. The sisters could spend hours in the kitchen over cups of coffee, reminiscing about childhood and discussing their girlhood dreams. They laughed until they cried, recounting hilarious tales from the past, and cried sharing each other's pains and disappointments. These moments of sisterly closeness were the most precious for them, for it was in those instances that they truly felt happy and needed by one another. Amanda too dreamed of getting married and having children, so she actively helped Anna care for her babies, gaining first-hand experience in motherhood. The first years of Anna's eldest daughter's life unfolded under the watchful eyes of her loving mother and doting Aunt Amanda. This allowed the sisters to bond even tighter and preserve their special connection. And for Amanda, caring for her niece became an invaluable school for future parenthood. She joyfully played with, fed, bathed, and doted on the little one. Anna joked that with such a great helper, she could have ten kids. 
and Anna herself was in dire need of her twins' assistance juggling three young children plus work, the young mother could barely keep up with all her duties. Amanda tried to be there, offering her shoulder in the toughest moments. She visited her sister every weekend, helped with cleaning, cooked delicious meals so Anna could get some rest. The sisters strolled through parks with the kids, went shopping, discussed their girly secrets. These were moments of true happiness and unity when it seemed the whole world revolved around their small yet mighty family. Eventually, Amanda got a boyfriend and unexpectedly became pregnant. It was a real surprise for both sisters, but they knew they'd tackle any challenge together. Now it was Anna's turn to fully support her sister, sharing wisdom and advice. The girls jointly prepared for the arrival of their parents' first grandchild and Amanda's firstborn. They spent hours picking out baby items, setting up the nursery, dreaming of what he would be like. Amanda's pregnancy was not an easy one, with severe morning sickness and swelling. But Anna was always by her side, ready to help and encourage her sister. She drove Amanda to all her medical checkups, monitored her well-being, ensured she ate properly and didn't overexert herself. Anna understood how crucial it was for Amanda to feel protected and needed during this difficult time. And then that long-awaited day finally arrived little Alex, Amanda's firstborn and Anna's nephew, entered the world. The sisters couldn't get enough of the tiny bundle who resembled them both so much. Together they cared for, bathed and lulled the baby to sleep. Alex became yet another proof of their inseparable bond, one more thread tying their fates tightly together. Motherhood transformed Amanda, making her more responsible and wise. Now she understood her sister's anxieties and joys even better. The girls could spend hours discussing childhood antics, exchanging parenting tips, dreaming of their kids' futures. They knew their children would grow up just as close and loving as they were. Over the years, the children grew while Amanda and Anna's sisterly bond only strengthened further. They continued to be each other's pillars, sharing every joy and sorrow. Their kids too grew up together like siblings, inheriting their mother's love and devotion to family. Despite the demands of motherhood, the sisters still found time to cut loose. Amanda and Anna loved partying and living it up with friends. They often hit the clubs together, dancing until dawn. Among their crew, the twins radiated wild energy, positivity, and some magical aura of unity. The Ramirez sisters seemed to read each other's minds, understanding every half-uttered word, laughing at inside jokes only they shared. On June 22, 2019, Amanda and Anna went out partying again. At that point, they were 27, with Anna raising three young kids while Amanda had recently given birth to her first daughter and was battling postpartum depression. But despite the exhaustion and responsibilities, the sisters decided to let loose and dance like old times. The girls first had fun at a club with friends. Around midnight, the group headed to their cousin's place. There, the sisters continued drinking, laughing and snapping carefree selfies. In one photo posted to social media around 5 a.m., the beaming twins posed with drinks in hand, the caption reading they were feeling those positive vibrations. Little did anyone know then that this picture would become the sisters' final living image. As the detective who investigated this case, I understand how precious every moment spent with loved ones truly is. That photo became a symbol of just how fragile human life can be and how crucial it is to savor every instant while we can. In that snapshot, Amanda and Anna look carefree and joyful, blissfully unaware of the tragedy looming just ahead. Around 5.30 a.m., tragedy struck. It was at that moment that Anna suffered a deep stab wound to her chest and collapsed, bleeding onto the sidewalk outside her cousin's home. The police received a frantic 911 call around 5.40 a.m. from Amanda. The terrified woman pleaded for help, screaming that her sister was injured and bleeding profusely. Before medics and cops arrived, Anna was still breathing but soon lost consciousness from the trauma and blood loss. An ambulance rushed the victim to the nearest medical center. Doctors fought for nearly an hour to save Anna's life, but at 6.20 a.m. they pronounced her dead. The severe stab wound proved fatal the mother of three had perished in the arms of medical staff. This tragic event came as a true shock to the Ramirez family and all who knew Anna. The horrific news of her death spread like wildfire through the small town, leaving a trail of unanswered questions in its wake. No one could believe that this joyful, loving woman had left this world so young under such mysterious circumstances. For Amanda, losing her sister was the hardest blow of all. In an instant, she lost her closest kin whom she'd walked through life side by side with. The pain of this loss was unbearable, the realization that Anna was gone for good seeming like a waking nightmare to escape from. But the harsh reality was that Anna had truly passed, forever changing the lives of her loved ones. 
Now the Ramirez family would have to find a way to keep living without her, raise her children, remember her with love and sorrow, and Amanda would have to grow accustomed to never being able to hug her sister, seek her advice, or simply sit in silent sisterly company again. Anna's death left a whirlwind of questions unanswered. What had happened that fateful night? Who could have wished harm upon this kind-hearted woman? Was it an accident or intentional crime? The answers still needed to be found, and that became the primary mission for the police and detectives investigating the case. But whatever the official findings, for Anna's loved ones, she would forever remain a loving daughter, sister, mother and friend. Her bright spirit would live on in their hearts, her memory providing warmth in the darkest hours. The shocking news of Anna's death left the entire Ramirez family stunned. No one could believe that some madman had inflicted a fatal wound upon the young mother in the middle of the street. After all, Anna was a kind, compassionate girl with no enemies or ill wishes, no run-ins with the law. So who could have dealt with a nurse so brutally? A blind coincidence or someone from her inner circle? Amanda's behavior immediately raised many questions for the police. Her clothing was covered in stains of her dead sister's blood, while her hands bore fresh cuts characteristic of a struggle over a knife. Moreover, neighbors claimed to have heard a loud argument between the sisters, but no male voices. These details compelled investigators to pay special attention to Amanda and her possible involvement in the tragedy. At first, Amanda refused to let the officers into her cousin's apartment, insisting she had just accidentally cut herself. But the bloody footprints on the floor and blood-stained kitchen knife in the sink made detectives suspect a complex case of family violence. The woman was taken in for questioning, where she would have to explain her behavior and recount everything that happened that fateful night. During interrogation, Amanda acted strangely and ambiguously. She oscillated between crying and pleading for belief in her innocence, then abruptly shutting down and refusing to answer questions. She claimed not to remember many details due to alcohol intoxication, that she and her sister had argued over something trivial, followed by a blackout. Such testimony only strengthened investigators' suspicions about Amanda's role in the murder. Other party guests confirmed the sisters had indeed quarreled before Anna stormed out alone but no one could say precisely what happened next and how she sustained her fatal injury. Forensics showed the knife used to kill the woman belonged to the owners of the apartment where the party took place. However, no fingerprints were found, and the sister's cousin swore he wasn't involved in the crime. This tangled case became a true challenge for detectives. On one hand, all evidence pointed to Anna's killer being someone in her inner circle, possibly even her own sister. But on the other, the motive for such a brutal crime remained unclear. After all, the Ramirez sisters had always been renowned for their inseparability and genuine love for each other. Who and why would want to shatter that special bond? As the investigation dragged on, the Ramirez family tried to recover from the horrific tragedy. They couldn't fathom Amanda intentionally harming her own flesh and blood, offering her unconditional support. But lingering doubts and unanswered questions tormented them. Why was Amanda acting so strangely? What really transpired that night? and would they ever uncover the truth about Anna's death? These questions haunted Anna's loved ones and friends. They understood the answers could prove too painful and shocking. Yet they also knew without the truth, they couldn't truly move forward, couldn't properly bid Anna farewell and find solace. Initially, Amanda tried convincing the police she had simply found her already injured sister on the sidewalk. She claimed to have approached Anna, attempted to stop the bleeding, and gotten covered in blood herself in the process. Then scared, she ran to the apartment to await the ambulance. But this version poorly aligned with the defensive cuts on Amanda's hands that immediately raised investigators' suspicions she was hiding something. They began scrutinizing her testimony more thoroughly. The woman quickly realized she wasn't being believed and changed her story. Now she insisted that she and Anna had been drinking at their cousin's place when they abruptly got into an argument, even resulting in Anna slapping her. Afterwards, Anna left for home while Amanda stayed behind with their cousin. 45 minutes later, she went outside and discovered her sister's bloodied body. This account seemed more plausible yet still left many questions unanswered. Investigators tried determining what exactly the sisters had quarreled over and whether it could have motivated a murder. But Amanda kept altering her statements, getting muddled in the details, unable to clearly explain what happened. At times she claimed not remembering the conflict's cause, then suddenly recalling minor insults that supposedly escalated into a physical fight. Such inconsistent, contradictory testimony only deepened detectives' suspicions about Amanda's involvement in the crime. They suspected she was concealing something, perhaps trying to cover for herself or someone else. But proving it was no easy feat with no direct evidence against Amanda, while her statements continually changed. 
Interviewing other witnesses didn't clarify matters either. The sister's cousin corroborated they had fought but insisted hearing and seeing nothing suspicious. Neighbors reported loud shouts and scuffling noises, but none could pinpoint precisely who exited the building and when. Investigators found themselves at a dead end. All signs pointed to a crime of passion, yet the motive and circumstances remained baffling, and Amanda's convoluted statements only further muddied the waters. Meanwhile, the Ramirez family grieved their terrible tragedy. They couldn't fathom Anna being gone, desperately searching for answers. Parents and relatives tried supporting Amanda, believing her innocence, yet tortured by lingering doubts. Why was she acting so strangely? What really happened that night? And would they ever uncover the truth? For Amanda, the situation became a true ordeal. She had to live daily with the burden of guilt and suspicion, respond to uncomfortable questions from detectives and kin, reliving that horrific moment she claimed to have discovered her sister's body again and again. And though the woman maintained her non-involvement, her own memories and feelings grew increasingly tangled, tormenting her every waking moment. Would Amanda be able to prove her innocence? Could the investigation unravel this complex knot of contradictory testimonies and find the real killer? And what price would the Ramirez family have to pay for the truth about Anna's death? Amanda claimed not to remember the reasons for arguing with her sister she had drunk too much that night. She then recounted how after being slapped, something seemed to short circuit in her head. She blacked out, only coming to while standing over bloodied Anna with a knife in hand. Terrified, she tossed the knife in the sink and called an ambulance. The woman wept bitterly, begging to be believed that she hadn't wanted her little sister dead. Her testimony rang sincere yet raised many questions and doubts for investigators. Detectives concluded Amanda was holding something back. It was doubtful a simple quarrel after 27 years of an ideal sisterly bond could escalate into such a bloody attack. Those mysterious lapses in memory also raised major skepticism. Police suspected Amanda had long harbored resentment towards her sister that came bursting out in a drunken rage with a knife. They began carefully examining the sister's past, searching for possible triggers for conflict. The fact that the woman had struck Anna with one precise blow to the heart indicated premeditated intent to kill, and her attempt to shift blame onto some abstract assailant only worsened the situation. The family denied any serious conflicts between the sisters. Their cousin corroborated the fight, but admitted not knowing what had provoked the argument between the twins. Without this key information, investigators knew unraveling the truth would prove difficult. The defensive cuts on Amanda's hands seemed to confirm her account of struggling over the knife. But if events unfolded as she claimed, why brandish a deadly weapon during a tiff with her sister in the first place? And why not immediately call an ambulance instead of returning to the apartment? These lingering questions tormented detectives striving to reconstruct the night's fateful events. Amanda couldn't answer those questions. She insisted remembering precious little from that evening, too intoxicated and ravaged by postpartum depression. But despite her tears and pleas for belief, police remained convinced something horrific had transpired between the sisters that morning Amanda wasn't divulging. Whatever it was had culminated in one sister's death with a knife in the other's grip, and now investigators had to determine whether it was tragic accident or premeditated murder. As the probe dragged on, the Ramirez family struggled to find solace and understand what had befallen their girls. They couldn't fathom Amanda intentionally harming the sister she'd been inseparable from her whole life. Yet gnawing doubts and speculations tormented them. Was Amanda concealing some terrible secret? Had that secret ignited the fatal fight? And would they ever know the truth? Meanwhile, Amanda herself, broken by grief and despair, strove to prove her innocence. She replayed that night's events in her mind over and over, but memories remained jumbled and fragmented. The woman couldn't comprehend how she could have caused her beloved sister's death even accidentally, and the blackouts only compounded her confusion and fear. Could she truly be repressing something unaware herself? Police continued gathering evidence and interviewing witnesses, hoping to find the key to unraveling this chilling tale. They understood any detail could prove pivotal, any testimony could shed light on that fateful night. Yet the more they uncovered, the more tangled the case became, and the harder it was to believe Amanda could have intentionally taken her twin sister's life. This tragedy became an ordeal not just for the Ramirez family, but for all who knew Amanda and Anna. People struggled to comprehend how such a loving, close-knit clan could find themselves at the epicenter of such a horrific story, and the suspicions and rumors only salted the already raw wounds. The media pounced on the news, further complicating detectives' work. As a practicing detective myself, I understand the immense pressure public scrutiny exerts, making it even harder to focus on the job at hand. 
The investigation had reached a dead end when suddenly an anonymous call came through to the police hotline. The unknown caller claimed Anna had been murdered by her own sister out of jealousy. This version was later corroborated by the victim's aunt, who alleged Amanda had been secretly carrying on an affair with Anna's husband, exploiting her uncanny resemblance to her twin. When Anna uncovered this liaison, she apparently accused her sister of treacherous betrayal in a heated rage. This bombshell information became a true sensation, compelling detectives to view the case from a new angle. The aunt insisted she had overheard Amanda boasting to a friend about her adulterous tryst with Anna's husband, mockingly adding how her dimwit sister remained oblivious. This theory could explain Amanda's strange behavior adamantly denying the fight's trigger. If the woman had indeed seduced her brother-in-law, she likely wouldn't want to admit to such a shameful act. Investigators began scrutinizing interpersonal dynamics within the Ramirez family more closely, seeking confirmation of this scandalous hypothesis. However, all other relatives, friends and especially Anna's husband unanimously dismissed rumors of a love triangle. They maintained the twins loved each other above all else, while Anna adored her Louis and would never have betrayed him. Suspicions of infidelity struck the kin as absurd and outrageous, completely inconsistent with the deceased's bright image. They couldn't fathom Amanda so treacherously deceiving her lifelong inseparable sister. Amanda and Anna's 19-year-old younger sister Monica swore under oath that the twins simply couldn't have betrayed one another that way, bound by a profound spiritual connection. The girl testified that Anna had been dating Louis for years, while Amanda had her own longtime boyfriend whom she had a daughter with and planned to marry. So there was no incentive for an affair with her brother-in-law, Monica insisted. Her testimony cast doubt on the love triangle theory, compelling a search for alternative motives. When police notified Amanda of her sister's death, she allegedly flew into hysterics. According to Monica, who was on the phone with Amanda in that moment, her sister wept so inconsolably and begged for belief that her tears clearly stemmed from genuine anguish rather than a treacherous deceiver's feigned remorse. The family continued maintaining the police investigation files amounted to unfounded speculation and slander. They couldn't accept Amanda being capable of such a horrific crime. Investigators found themselves in a difficult position. On one hand, the jealousy-fueled love triangle seemed plausible, potentially explaining Amanda's bizarre conduct. But on the other, testimony from the sisters' loved ones directly contradicted this narrative. Plus, no hard evidence of an affair could be uncovered. An anonymous call and the aunt's hearsay provided far too flimsy a basis for premeditated murder charges. In my opinion, this love triangle is pure nonsense, pardon my bluntness. But if you have your own theory, feel free to share it with me in the comments, I'd be happy to discuss it further. Meanwhile, Amanda's defense insisted on her innocence. Her attorneys argued all evidence against their client amounted to circumstantial contradictions. They urged the court not to fall for provocations and conjecture, but rely solely on facts and common sense. The defenders stressed that Amanda and Anna were not just sisters, but best friends who would never betray each other. The case garnered increasing publicity, drawing intense public and media scrutiny. Public opinion diverged some believed in Amanda's innocence and sympathized with the Ramirez family's plight, while others remained convinced of her guilt demanding harsh punishment. This trial became a true ordeal for all participants, especially Amanda fighting not just for her freedom, but to preserve her sister's honor and good name. In September 2019, Amanda entered into a plea deal with prosecutors. She admitted that under the influence of alcohol and postpartum depression, she had unconsciously, in a state of passion, stabbed her sister with a knife. The woman insisted she harbored no malicious intent and bitterly regretted her actions, having essentially ruined two lives her own and her beloved sister's. Her confession came as a shock to all who had followed this high-profile case. During the trial, Amanda wept bitterly, begging God and everyone present for forgiveness, calling herself the vilest creature while pleading for a chance to atone. She stated she would now carry the cross of remorse and the pain of irreparable loss until the end of her days. The court sentence paled in comparison to the eternal pangs of conscience she claimed. Her words moved those in the courtroom, yet could not bring the deceased Anna back. The judge ruled Anna's killing an intentional crime, but took into account Amanda's sincere remorse and extenuating circumstances. She was sentenced to six years imprisonment with possibility of parole after serving five years. Amanda broke down sobbing upon hearing the sentence, imploring the heavens and all around to forgive her most grievous sin. She understood this punishment amounted to only a fraction of the guilt she would bear for life. After the trial, the victim's relatives stated they harbored no ill will towards Amanda and accepted her remorse. Amanda and Anna's mother took custody of her grandchildren, 
while the rest of the family vowed to support the imprisoned woman's young daughter until her release. The kin believed Amanda had sincerely repented and deserved a chance at atonement. They held faith that in time they could forgive her and restore family ties for the children's sake and Anna's memory. Such a chilling story, colleagues. As difficult as it is to admit, it was drinking and unbridled emotion that ruined the lives of two young women, two families depriving five children of a mother's love, and the core mystery what truly sparked that fatal burst of rage continues to be debated by police, attorneys, journalists to this day. The official investigation failed to provide a definitive answer. Amanda's loved ones view her an innocent victim of tragic circumstance, while law enforcement leans towards a theory of premeditated murder driven by jealousy. Proving or disproving a clandestine liaison between Amanda and her brother-in-law is now impossible. The woman adamantly denies any such subtext to the fight, while Anna's husband categorically rejects even hypothetical possibility of such events transpiring. This secret, it seems, will be forever buried alongside Anna. Yet despite all the speculation and uncomfortable questions, one sad fact alone remains certain a young mother of two infants ended her 27-year-old twin sister's life with a single knife blow and now bitterly regrets her actions. And the bereaved Ramirez family will take a long time recovering from the consequences of that dreadful night of June 22, 2019. They will have to learn to live with this pain and Anna's memory, raise her children and build a new life without her. This tragedy serves as a grave lesson for us all. A lesson in how fragile and vulnerable human life truly is, how easily it can be shattered in one fateful instant, and that neither family bonds nor love can shield us from horrific mistakes and irreversible loss. Amanda must now carry the burden of guilt and remorse for her crime for the rest of her days. While we outside observers can only sympathize with her shattered fate and pray such tragedies never repeat themselves. The story of Amanda and Anna Ramirez is more than just a criminal chronicle, it's a true human drama. A drama about two ruined lives, about love twisted into hatred, and about the remorse that may perhaps lead to atonement. And although justice has been served and the guilty punished, this story will continue aching in the hearts of all who know it for a long time to come. For there is no greater pain than losing a loved one, especially when that loss results from a fatal mistake by someone close.